Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. If everything is going according to plan, you're watching this video on Friday, which is the first day of your well-deserved weekend. And so you want to play War Thunder. And then you want to play the vehicles that you've grinded for. For example, in my case, the Hind 17A5, introduced pad 1.77. It is a long-range strategic bomber with a beautiful 3D model and, uh, you know, various different bomb load options and my bombers. There are a few factors that actually then uh, make me not play it. First of all, there are over 1,800 vehicles in the game by now that also want to be played, which is a huge number. And um, another factor that is universally hated by the community, and I want to talk about today, and that is the repair cost or the repair cost problem. So in today's video, I want to explain um, or to show you a few examples and based on those examples, show you the problems with the repair costs that affect us all directly and directly in every single battle throughout various different battle ratings. And I just want to expose how Gaijin makes a ludicrous amount of money with this by abusing the community that try to dodge the repair costs and um, we have seen those patterns for years so it's nothing new but it's not just a discussion and a rant but also um, I have various different suggestions how to make it better for Gaijin and the player base so everybody would profit those uh, suggestions are not new and uh, I've mentioned them before here and there in our duck talks or another video. But this is just a reminder because once in a while we just shall see where this has led us. So, repair costs. First of all, I want to explain what they are, um, what kind of problems they cause, and or how Gaijin fails with a balancing attempt, what Gaijin really wants to achieve, and how they absolutely nail it with the repair costs and uh, then further problems with it and then the suggestions for um, solving those issues so repair cost you have to pay them when you get destroyed in your plane your ship your helicopter your tank whatsoever repair costs we have seen them with up to 60,000 civil lines that is eating up all your profit now first of all I know there is the option to disable the automatic repair. However, for the Heinkel 177, that would take six days and 17 hours. So I can play the plane only once per week. Let's face it, that's not a viable option. Um, so the civil lines are not there or the repair costs are not there to balance the planes, ships, tanks helicopters in-game actual performance, but only the actual profit that you make. However, this is a self-enforcing problem. First of all, when you, when you play such a plane, you play it because you like it or because it's fun and it's cool and you enjoy it, right? I for myself have waited for the longest time to see this beautiful plane in the game and I thoroughly enjoyed it when it came out. But soon I kind of lost interest in playing it amongst them because amongst the reasons were the repair costs because I, I, it's always in the back of my head. I must not die. And so people think effectively how to dodge those repair costs. And that then brings with it the self-enforcing problem. And one of those uh, examples is, in this case, the Heinkel 177. But it's true for a lot of bombers and in general planes throughout all the nations, depending on the game mode, etc, etc. So when you are in a bomber, um, yeah, what kind of solutions are there to dodge the repair cost? First of all, the first 10 battles are for free. But in those 10 first battles, you're stuck. So you can buy stuff with gold eagles. Again, Gaijin would profit. Then, depending on the game mode, for example, tank or realistic battles or combined battles, you could uh, buy backups either for gold eagles, Gaijin would profit, or via the Warbond shop. But there are only so many backups that you can get before you run out of them. So if you are really playing a lot, then again, profits. Um, so the other thing is that you try to drop your bombs, return to base and land and then bail out. 
So you would then kind of miss on your team's side when it's clutch and you could make the difference. But the risk is just there and a lot of people don't want to take that risk. Another thing is that you just don't play it. And this is what a lot of people are you know, doing. They're just not playing it. And therefore, um, the very dedicated players continue playing it. But the dedicated players very often know a bit more what they're doing than the player that just wants to try it out for the first time because that's uh, one of the planes uh, that's on his way to the tech tree top bomber, right? And um, so the better players are then playing the plane. They die less. Also, they're using tactics like space climbing, which is awful if you experience this. Hence, Gaichen reduced the realistic, uh, error, realistic battle time from 1 hour to 25 minutes. So, problem solved, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Again, so people die less, 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 and they make more and more money, and then we have the self-increasing uh, problem of raising and raising um, repair costs, because Gaichen just looks at the Excel spreadsheet. And then there is another factor. That is when the plane, tank, ship, whatever is already in the game for quite a while. You know, this endless spiral of climbing repair costs. I'm not mentioning here the bomber rework, which also was a big fail and eye washing, whatever. Let's have a look at battleships. And let's have a look at something that uh, everybody that plays now forces. So hello, you three there. <laughs> uh, also experience. The German SMS Westfalen. Sturdy armor. 11-inch main batteries with a broadside of 8 guns and 20-second uh, reload, 8 11-inch guns. Really cool ship, perfect for killing cruisers. And by gunfire, you very rarely get destroyed. Repair cost, 45,000 silver lines since the last economy update. Ouch. So when you're unlucky, you destroy that one cruiser that then has enough spawn points to spawn in a bomber and comes after you, revenge killing you, P8 um, or some other plane with huge bombs. And then you leave the battle with a massive loss. And you need a lot of silver lines to purchase the vehicle that you just uh, researched, then to put it into a crew by the expert qualification buy unlocked modules, the ammunition cost, etc. And then you also have to face the repair bill. Gaichi knows what they're doing. And again, the profit. Because <laughs> no problem, comrade. Just exchange gold needles to silver lines. By the way, don't do this. Worst investment ever, period, ever. Or buy a premium account. Again, Gaichi profits. Um, depending on how much you play, that's actually one of the better investments in War Thunder. However, this ship got introduced two patches ago. Now we come to the point, right? And it's very effective. And I said this before it was introduced. I'm giving feedback wherever I can for Gaijin, but um, they are twisting it in pervert ways. Because then this patch, this ship got introduced, the SMS Thunderton. And it also has eight 11 inch gun broadside every 20 seconds. Same ammunition. It's even a bit better because it's faster and it's also incredibly tanky. Guess the repair cost of a ship that got introduced this patch before an economy update versus a ship that had 45,000 civil lines that has more or less the same performance? 8,000 civil lines. Guess what gets spammed? The Fonderton. It's a great ship and it's really fun. But how do you get to the Fonderton? Let's have a look uh, at the tech tree. Yeah, right. You research it. With what? The Graf Spee with the talisman on it? Gaichen Profits. Prinz Eugen, $60 or Euro package? Gaichen Profits. And then you have it for this one patch where you can really spam it hard before you face this fate with 45,000 civilian repair costs. Yeah. Gaichen profits. With the next economy update, I guarantee you, this will see 30, 40, maybe 50,000 civil line repair cost. Another factor is that makes it painfully obvious. Look at the SMS Westfalen. 8 11-inch gun broadside. 
11 inches, perfect for killing cruisers. This patch we also saw the introduction at the same battle rating of the IJN Yuga, a super dreadnought with a 12 gun broadside of 14 inch guns at the same battle rating. Leaving aside the quality control issues with the uh, flipped armor belt, you know, because Gaijin quality control, duh, and the um, AP shells not working, it's actually not that effective as you would think it would be. As long as you don't shoot it and it can fire uh, those HE shells at you, it still has the best firepower in the game. Guess the repair cost for a newly imp uh, implemented ship. Yep, 15,000 civil lines. A third of the German Dreadnought. Now another ship, the IGN Setsu, has 36,000 civil lines, fully upgraded that is. Um, and that has significantly weaker armament of only 12 inch guns of only 8 gun broadside with the same 30 second reload, weaker ammunition uh, and in theory less protected. This power creep, feature creep, and enforced compression is what makes Gaijin the money. So you kind of see what people are abusing the hell out of the game. Those who have the deep wallet, the whales, um, the trolls, the people that don't care, or the people that just want to stat pad. I want this to stop because it ruins the gameplay experience even more than we have with the incompetence on the development side. So you can see that repair costs are a factor in many aspects. I can't even talk you through all of them, but I just wanted to show you a glimpse of the consequences. The same is with tanks. You know, when, when you look at the latest premium, um, and by the way, another very interesting example is here, and again, a perfect example in the German tech tree is the uh, mouse. The repair costs went steadily up for a vehicle that is completely obsolete. And this is purely looking at the statistical side, because the people that still have it and play it um, are more experienced players by now, in contrast to people that play, for example, the Leopard 1, which is uh, available for research, you know, that has uh, only 5,000 civil line repair costs, despite being objectively a better tank. More pen, better gun handling, significantly more mobile, and um, yeah, overall, the mouse makes more civil lines than the Leopard because it can absorb more damage. That is globally seen. However, again, the mouse was re removed from active research and costs now 14,000 because it, it delivers better and better income because it gets rarer and rarer and the people that play it are better and better. A vehicle that is very similar in performance, speed, firepower, protection is the E100. And it's even rarer and gets uh, played even more rare. And um, the people generate even more money. Guess its repair costs. 26,000 civil lines. Do you see a pattern? This is um, a repeating pattern for the past eight years now. And it could be significantly easier. So what is my suggestion? Well, it's very simple. It's a big picture change. Cap the repair costs at 10,000 silver lines. If a vehicle, according to the never unwise Excel spreadsheet, suggests a higher repair cost, increase the battle rating. And if then you see that the vehicle is obsolete at the newer higher battle rating, maybe you should also think about decompressing all the tech trees because comp is another huge issue. Also, before we have such a problem like the SMS Westfalen, and the battleships in general and the SMS von der Tan in the next update, play test it more or at all so that experienced players can tell you what those ships, planes, tanks, helicopters are really capable in contrast to the meta that exists in the 
yeah, patch that now is live. So make the dev server available for a few weeks and you get tons of feedback. The result would be less frustrated players, more happy players, more viable vehicles. Also, the changes to the game modes should be such that a vehicle sometimes should not be introduced in the first place. The tier 4 bomb load is just too good. The B29 bomb load is just too good. The Heinkel 177 bomb loads is just too good. So if you would increase the overall uh, health of the bases to such a degree that a four-man squad of those said bombers can no longer destroy the base, there is nothing to gain for bombers with a lesser bomb load. That is again a bit of a problem. And um, that would require an overhaul of the overall game modes, air RP, tank RP, ship RP, arcade, simulator. The game is in a state where the problems pile up and yet Gaijin managed to make a huge profit from it. So the biggest problem with repair costs is not that they are a problem, but that Gaijin actually profits from what you think is a problem. And that is a problem. So the only option is to not play the thing that you like to play, which is also not an option because you invested so much money, so much time and effort to get it in the first place. And so you are a slave of your own desires. And the only option at the end is for you to open the wallet. And this is just the perfection of Gatchin's business model. The solutions are there, there are no secret, they have been mentioned years ago. Repair costs, a never ending vicious cycle of frustration, just like Gaijin wants it, just like Gaijin likes it, just like Gaijin likes to profit from it. And uh, I know this sounds sad, but think about it logically. And let me know in the comment section down below. And that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Give this video a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder. Mm -hmm.